Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Rafkin. Thanks, Rob, and thanks for joining us. You won't be seeing Tim's smiling face this episode. COVID finally caught up with this with Tim this week, unfortunately. However, he is here with us in the background helping to produce this episode. So please join me in wishing him a very speedy recovery. Welcome to Inject Creativity Live, a show based on creativity for all all in education with a focus on Adobe tools and resources. So we are delighted to once again have Chris Betcher and Juliet Bentley with us. Welcome, Chris and Juliet. Hiya. Thanks, Erin. And also a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. And we welcome all those watching via the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group for this, the 69th episode of Inject Creativity Live, being recorded June 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi, share what you are, you are from, and add comments throughout the show. Let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yagara and Dugurapul people from around the area otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong to the stage. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. During this episode, we will be hearing from young filmmaker, filmmaker Joseph Ho, who learned Adobe tools while at school and now has a career as a content creator and filmmaker. And we'll also be promoting both the International Adobe Education Summit in July and the APAC Asia Pacific Adobe Education Summit in September. And we'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. Mm. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do enjoy this episode, please share it with your colleagues and your wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global education community programs, and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Thank you, Clara, for promoting our summit. The 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is happening on Wednesday, the 28th of September. And if you haven't already registered, uh, please do. You can register via adobe.ly slash APAC dash edu dash summit 22. Tim explains more in this clip. Hi folks, the 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is being held on Wednesday the 28th of September, which is a school holiday period for most of you. Dr. Tim Patston, Australia's leading researcher and consultant in the field of creativity and innovation in education, will be our special guest and you'll also be hearing from the global Adobe Education team, as well as Adobe Education leaders who will be sharing their classroom success stories, creative catalyst talks, as well as providing a range of practical workshops to help you make the most of your access to Adobe tools, especially the free Adobe Creative Cloud Express set of tools and resources. Register via adobe.ly slash apac-edu-summit22 or scan this QR code. We are looking forward to sharing with you and your colleagues at the 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit. Before you come to the summit this year, we are encouraging those of you who are living in Australia to go to the SBS On Demand app. Um, or site and look up the show Finding Creativity. 
Mm. Oh, sorry, Aaron, I was too busy finding finding creativity on the <laughs> um, One of the main stars of this amazing documentary is on creativity is our keynote presenter for the summit, Dr. Tim Patston, who, as Tim mentioned in the clip we just saw, was is Australia's leading researcher in the area of creativity and innovation. As educators, it's so important for us to keep learning about the importance of creativity and how we should foster it in our curriculum areas. Finding Creativity is a beautifully produced documentary on creativity and is well worth watching. Hi everyone, my name is Dr Tim Patston and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Mm. The Regeneration International Short Film Competition is now happening in August, which gives you and your students more time to get involved. Yep, and Tim and Rob put together this clip to share more. Hi folks, I'm Tim from Adobe. And I'm Rob the Robot. Get your cameras, microphones, tripods and Adobe apps ready for the Regeneration, Regeneration International, International Short, Short Film, Film Competition, Competition with, with Adobe. Adobe. This competition is part of the 2022 Regeneration Youth Festival, which is focused on building a resilient and empowered future. Tim, what do the students need to do to enter this competition? Good question, Rob. The students need to organise a small group of preferably three to five and plan, film and edit a short film that goes for between one and two minutes based on the theme of building resilience and empowerment for creating the world we all wish to live in. With a focus on sustainability and a reference to at least one of the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. Can it be an animation? Sure can, Rob. What about a mix of real life like me and animation like you? Yes, absolutely. I mean, what do you mean like an animation like me? I mean, you're the animation in our relationship. There are two main age categories for this film competition. Years 5 to 9 students, about aged 10 to 14, and years 10 to 12 students, about aged 15 to 18. Winning entries from each section will be showcased at the Regeneration Festival at the Immigration Museum in Melbourne. And so, the... Um there are 40 schools registered so far and over 1,700 students that are potentially involved in the Regeneration Film Festival. Hmm. Remember this competition is open to any student from years five to 12 throughout Australia, New Zealand and into Southeast Asia. So register your school, get involved. Hi, Rebecca Hare here from the ACE course on the Education Exchange. Thank you for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't taken the ACE course yet, definitely go to the Education Exchange and sign up and I'll see you there. In the June newsletter, which will come out next week, one of the main stories will be the new school project and lesson ideas with Adobe that links Adobe Education Exchange resources to the Austra Australian curriculum. And if you don't already get the monthly Australasian Adobe and Education Update newsletter, Join the email list by completing the Adobe and EDU contact form via adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, head of Adobe's thought leadership and advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator podcast. Joseph Ho is a young filmmaker who learned how to use a range of Adobe tools while at school in Victoria. Tim recently caught up with Joseph and recorded this interview. Pleased to be interviewing filmmaker, writer, director, Joseph Ho. Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live stage, Joseph. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure to be here. So tell us about the work that you do, Joseph. Um, so at the moment, I am, I guess you could say a motion designer or content creator by trade. Um, I work at church communications team and we pump out uh, videos, update videos, promotional videos for events, stuff like that. Um, and I guess on the side, you could say I'm an independent filmmaker. Um, I just finished directing a short children's animation, my first one, so I'm really proud of it. Uh, it's called Wonderfully Made. Um, so that was like my debut animated film, um, my pride and joy. <laughs> and that's kind of what I do. 
How old were you when you first discovered Adobe Tools? Yeah, no, I think I was um, pretty young. Uh, off the top of my head, I think I was about 14. Um, and I started off with, I think, CS5 Photoshop, uh, opened it up on my little old Toshiba laptop um, and took my first deep dive into the world of digital art. Um, so I started with some digital painting, you know, worked out that you could use different sorts of brushes. And I painted, I think my first one was a galaxy and I was so stoked with it, went around showing everyone, put it on Instagram and, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that was my first little start. So that was in high school. Was it formally part of a subject you were doing or was it just something out of interest? Um, I found that out of interest, um, except for we did touch on it. Um, I did VizCom, I also did media. Uh, so VizCom, we used Illustrator, we used Photoshop, InDesign as well. Um, and I really loved illustration. And then in media, which actually turned out to be a bit of a passion uh, that I still do now, we use like um, Premiere, After Effects and all of that. So I really started off in high school with a really great basis and then moved on in university and did a little bit more there too. What tools did you gravitate to most when you first started to discover this world of digital media and digital creativity? No, it was definitely Photoshop. Um, well, like the fun little thing is you'd make little memes or little funny edits of your friends on Photoshop. Um, but then I also loved art. I, I grew up sketching and drawing all the time. I would draw on my tests and everything like that. Um, and I found that it was so cool to be able to do that on a computer. And um, I really feel like I learned to paint and I learned a lot of my artistic ability digitally. Um, and that actually changes a little bit how I think about art even now, because it's very different to traditional. The biggest difference is you can control Z, you've got a bunch of different effects, editing abilities. Um, and it really opened up, I guess, the way I thought about creativity as a whole. So I would say digital and Adobe, especially Photoshop, um, really formed kind of my creativity at an early stage as well. How did you actually learn the tools? And was it teachers or was it tutorials on YouTube? Yeah, um, I'm a big learner by doing. Um, so what I found that I would usually do is we would learn stuff in class and I would kind of go home and work with it. And there'd be a learning process there just by myself and through the teachers. One big thing that I love doing was hopping on YouTube and watching someone paint something and watching someone uh, narrate as they would paint. So I'd get a sense of why they would use a certain color, why they would use a certain effect. Um, and then with that software, the exact same software, because it was really very broadly used Photoshop for digital art, it's kind of the standard. Um, I'd be able to find that effect, search it up and do the exact same one um, and then just edit it per project that I was doing. Um, I think I found that that was where I grew the most in my creative learning. Um, and then if I had a specific question, like tutors at uni, teachers at high school um, that were more familiar with the software, um, they would be a big help as well. So you felt there was an advantage in actually having the professional tool while you were still at school? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, I've used different software. So I've used um, a few other programs that are similar to Photoshop and they're good. Like I wouldn't say don't use them, um, but it's just it it helps a lot, especially when you're learning, when the person teaching you is using the exact same thing. So I don't have to filter or translate something into my program. I can just use Photoshop. They're using Photoshop. The effect is named the same thing. It's in the same spot. Um, and it just makes it easier to learn. So you've progressed from high school, learning the professional tools while you were a teenager. And when you graduated, you moved to a wonderful university in Melbourne. Tell us about that experience. Yes, I did a Bachelor of Animation and I minored in digital media at Swinburne University of Technology. Um, that was awesome because we got to use um, Adobe. So it transferred from high school uh, straight to uni um, and they taught us a lot more in depth. Um, and that's where I learnt, I would say maybe I guess a more advanced tool in After Effects, um, which I used heaps for the film actually. Um, but that was really good because um, with like dynamic link and everything like that, it all worked together. Um, so I could import a Photoshop document straight into 
after effects and we could learn all of that and every program was linked together so even in different classes where i'm learning different skills design and animation or film we're kind of using the same thing um so that was really helpful and then something very special happened at swinburne university tell us what happened that was a benefit to you and also the other students yeah so we um what happened it was a little bit later when i was in uni um, but it was just in time for my final year project. I think every student got CC for free through our student email. And I remember me and my friends, when we got the email, we're messaging each other saying, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> we get it for free, you can use everything uh, and not have the stress as a student of figuring out what program I'm going to invest into with my uh, zero dollars in my bank account as a student. So. <laughs> It was wonderful to be able to bring Swinburne into the Adobe Creative Campus, a group of universities around the world. Swinburne was the first in the Southern Hemisphere, certainly the first in this part of the world. Since then, Joseph, RMIT has come on board as an Adobe Creative Campus as well. But Swinburne was the first. And I'm so pleased to see that it was beneficial to you. It was kind of essential, to be honest, because I know a lot of my friends either, you know, maybe they're struggling or they're on exchange or something like that, um, or, you know, international, whatever it is. Um, we did our final year project during COVID, uh, when COVID first started. So we had, I think, three weeks in the labs in the studios, but then we had to do everything from home. So if we didn't have that access through our email, if it was, you know, just something we could only use on a specific computer at uni, it would not have been possible to make the films um, that we did, or it would have been a lot more expensive on our end. Um, so it was a lifesaver, really, yeah. So give us some advice for teachers, because obviously we're talking to teachers at the moment. At the time when you were at high school, you probably didn't really appreciate how much these tools will be helping you in the future. What advice do you have for teachers now who are teaching young future Joseph Hose and other students who are in their teenage years? Yeah, no, I would say um, get them started as early as possible on a variety of different software. Um, because what happens creatively when you're in the ideation, the conception um, stage, when you know that you can do something in a program that opens up one, your brainstorms to be a little bit more broad because you're like, okay, I actually can do that. It's not when you're a kid, you're thinking, oh, I've got this great idea, but I've got no idea how to do it. Um, if you have experience with the software, it opens up that pathway. Um, but then also it makes your brainstorms a lot more streamlined because you know what you can achieve. Um, so I would say, uh, you know, if you're a teacher and you've got a kid who is, you know, a little bit creative, get them started on Photoshop just so they can learn. Um, it's really safe Photoshop because you can, it, it's what they call like a non, it's something where you can use non-destructive workflow layers and everything like that. Um, and then also get them started on something even like After Effects, if you have access to it, because it opens up this whole world of what they can do um, and it'll really push them creatively. Just to finish up, Joseph, let's promote your film again. I'm just going to bring up the Instagram handle. At the moment, it's not on YouTube, is it? Yes. Um, so you can follow us on Instagram, which is at Wonderfully Made Film. Um, and that will give you a little bit of behind the scenes. You'll see the illustrations uh, and all of that. And then eventually, and we'll notify you on Instagram, you can watch the film after we do our festival run and you can get all the updates there. And, and we're hoping to broaden that out into a children's book and actually do a school program as well with it, um, teaching animation or teaching illustration with that as well. Um, so keep your eyes on that and it'll blow up hopefully in the future. Good on you, Joseph. It's been a delight to chat to you and thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. It was an awesome opportunity doing this. Thank you. Hi, Ben Forte here from the Adobe Education Team. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. And for all the educators out there, if you have not yet joined the Adobe Creative Educator Program, please do so. Sixteen hundred and fifty Australian and New Zealand teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator course and over 52,000 globally.
<laughs> oh. <laughs> if you'd like to be guided through uh, level one, Erin and Tim are regularly offering the Be a Creative Educator course. Look up a doing online. Creative Educator for more information and check this or share this site with your colleagues and wider education networks. Chris, yeah, you were probably book. doing what I was doing was um checking out the Instagram for Joseph's that's exactly what I was project. Doing. Yeah, exactly I shared the link into the doing. chat, by the way, everyone that's watching. So if you are interested, it is in the in the chat on our broadcast. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. Anyway, sorry, the uh, the next opportunity is on Monday the 20th of June, 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Of course, if you look up adobe.ly forward slash ACE, you can do the creativity for all course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand and get your ACE level one badge. Yes, you can. The creativity for all course is one of the many great on demand courses you can get from the Adobe Education Exchange. Other popular courses at the moment include goal setting with Adobe Express, student presentations with Adobe Express, uh, infographics with Adobe Express. Certifying Adobe skills in your classroom. Adobe Analytics for teaching and learning. Uh, digital painting and drawing in the classroom. Teach creativity with Adobe and Khan Academy. And the new formative assessment with Adobe Express course. Here is Jesse Lubinsky from the Global Adobe EDU team to explain more about this new edX course. Ever been teaching for a bit and realized that you aren't quite sure if all of your students are following your lesson? Formative assessments allow us to make on-the-spot, data-driven decisions regarding student learning. Then we can purposefully plan the next steps in our teaching. Formative assessment is quick, it's not graded so it's low stakes, and it can be done anytime at the beginning, middle, or end of class no matter what subject you're teaching. I'm going to teach you how to create quick and easy formative assessments for your students using Adobe Express in a unique way. All right. Let's get creating. If you are on Facebook and you are not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash AUSAEL. Join us and keep regularly involved with Adobe and education and the wider community. So let's bring Jerry, Chris, and Juliet back up on the screen for the farewell. Yep, our next uh, Creativity Live event will feature Adobe Education leader, Dr. Max Schlesser, and he'll be joining us for episode 70. And Adobe Educator leader, Dr. Karen Sutherland, will be joining us for episode 71. And we will be recording both of those episodes on July 20 at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. And for those watching live at the moment, get ready to move over to the fireside chat room at adobe.ly slash edu dash meet dash APAC. A special thank you to Chris, Juliet and Jerry for helping to put this show together. And of course, our best wishes for Tim to make a speedy recovery from COVID, who has been a guiding hand in the background of our live episodes tonight. Here is Rob the Robot to sign off for this episode. Take care, everyone, and join us in saying hi and wishing Tim well. Take care. Get well, Tim. Hi, everyone. Take care, Tim. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us now via adobe.ly slash edu meet APAC for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters and other audience members. During this informal chat, you will be able to complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and topics and use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative.